Hi, welcome back to the shop. Thanks for stopping by. Um, this week's video is going to be a big time experiment. Um, I generate a lot of shorts in my shop. I make cutting boards and things like that. So I've got a lot of scrap wood kicking around. And um, I've seen some really interesting designs of people making bowls from a board, or economy bowls as they're called. <clears throat> and so uh, I've been holding off on making one for a while until I got a, a scroll saw. My thought was that rather than make my blank in two and cutting half circles on a bandsaw like most people do and then gluing those together and then stacking them and gluing those together, I would try to get solid rings, which I thought would be easier to work with. Well, this is Paduke and Yellowheart and Madagascar Ebony and it's hard. It's almost 7 eighths of an inch thick and that was a little bit too sassy for my scroll saw. So this was the original center of this board. The first one came out so-so. You can see it was a little rough in here, but the second one, it just I just couldn't get it. It was the, the saw was just traveling all over the place. So thankfully, I just touched the ebony, which is the part I really would have hated to lose. So I lost the saw curve plus this tiny little thin piece. <clears throat> so I was able to save what's left here. So I replaced the center with what was there, and uh, this is 12 inches square. And I've been thinking about how I could do this without having to cut those rings in half. And I'll show you what I come up with and I have no idea if it's going to work. I'm hopeful that it will. But these two pieces of birch plywood, I, I glued them together, screwed them together, center, mark center so that my face plate I can screw on here. On the other side, this is just a test run here with a square. On the other side, I've laid out where this square will go. So this will fit on here like this. I've made brackets for each corner which I'm going to drill and bolt. So these will be bolted through and a keeper to go on top of it. So you'll notice this is a little thicker than the, the, the plywood is 3 quarter, this is 7 8 So I can use any thickness of board that's 3 quarters or just a hair larger up to a certain extent. I could put washers in here between the bolts to hold this down. So all four corners will get, a, will get a, a guide in the corner, a keeper going on the top to hold it in. And my thought is when I get this on the lathe, um, I'll be dead center or very, very close to it. And so one of the things that I noticed that people from other videos have issues with is they're, they got to go back and glue everything up and then they got to find their center and turn some or glue a bottom on it or whatever. So what I'm going to do with this is when it's on the lathe, if everything works out, is I'm going to turn a mortise for my four jaw chuck in this and finish it. And then I'm going to cut my first circle with a parting tool. Then I'll cut my second one, third one, fourth one, however many I'm going to cut. And because of the angle, that piece that I cut won't be able to get out and it'll be safely nestled in there. If it turns out that it's not safe, these are gonna be bolted. And so I can take the bolts out of these two, for example, slide the whole piece out, take the rings I've already cut out, out of the piece, put it back in and keep cutting some more. So I'm gonna finish putting this thing together and, uh, and I'm gonna bring you back when it's on the lathe and we'll see how it works out. Okay, so I have my faceplate mounted on the back now. It's uh, it's running really, really true. The only bit of out is just the weight down here, actually, and very little bit. Uh, just rough cut this on the bandsaw. It's pretty close. Um, so I have made these sets of keepers. So I made the corner holder and the keeper that goes on top. I've numbered them and I've lined them so that I know which way they go so that it's repeatable. And I've also used those to drill these. So these are all made in sets so that all these holes align. And I'm always guilty of making these templates and things, jigs like this, with too low a tolerance. And so I have to fight a little bit to get them on and off. But this has got uh, quarter inch bolts going all the way through. I've got lots of clearance in the back. The bolts do stick out a little bit in the back, but I'm gonna be nowhere near that. So note to yourself, if you're gonna try this, make sure that if you do it and you have bolts sticking out to keep your body away from when they're spinning. All right, so this is the blank. Uh, it can go on now, but then I think Hopefully it'll go on now. Has to be lined up just right to fit. Okay, so that fits right down there like that. Now the reason you need to be so accurate at this, if you're doing a symmetrical pattern like this, if you're out of whack a little bit, then this ribbon, this this uh, strip will be too far to one side. This strip will be too far to the inside. It won't it won't look symmetrical. So I was very, very careful with this all the way through the process. And uh, hopefully, 
hopefully that'll pay off. Now the beauty of this is, is I can take a 12 inch piece of wood now at any time, glue it up and put it in the same jig. And if I choose to, I can take out, take these off, I can re-drill it for 11, 10s, 9s, whatever I want to. So that's kind of my goal with making this this way. It's a little bit of an overkill type thing, but um, I think I think if it works, the way that the rings are going to come out and the quality of the rings that are going to come out, and, um, and I'll be able to turn my mortise in the bottom right here perfectly centered, uh, I think it's going to be worth the time spent building this. So, so I'm just going to put these together now. So all I'm going to do, I'm, I'll do it off camera. I'm just going to slide these in and bolt them up. And I'll have everything all bolted up and I'll bring it back and then um, we'll mark out our we'll mark out our rings. Alright, so what I've got done here now, uh, this line, there's too many circles in here, but this line right here is the size I need to turn my mortise. And this will be the outside dimension of the base right here. And then I'm gonna go every three quarter inches. So there's a ring gonna come out here, one here, one here, and one here and possibly another one at the top. So we should get seven eighths thick times one, two, three, four, five, six rings. So we should be just under, just over five inches, five and a half inches high for a bowl or so. This is really solid. I have 100% confidence in this being safe to turn this way. So now I need to make a jig that will allow me to cut an angle. So I'll, I'll show you how I figured out the angle. I got that from another video and I cannot find the video. I've never heard of the gentleman before who who uh, had the idea for doing that. But anyhow, um, I'll show you how that how I did that. Okay, so really quickly in here, um, the video that I watched, and again, I can't find it for the life of me, but um, what the gentleman did is he drew a line down the edge of his board and then he measured a space in between and drew a second line which was the same width as the width of the rings that he wanted to cut. So in this case, I want to cut a three quarter inch wide ring. So I'm going to mark two lines parallel, three quarters of an inch wide on the edge of this piece. And then you, and then you draw a diagonal line from one corner on the top side of the board to the other corner on the bottom side of the board. And that gives you the angle. So if you were putting this on a saw to cut, for example, you'd tilt your bed until your saw blade aligned with this diagonal line. But in this case, I measured it, it was 42 degrees. And again, I'm not sure if this is correct or not, but it's the first time out and we're gonna give it a try. Okay, so <clears throat> what I've done is I, I wanna make a 42 degree angle cut this way uh, between, on the outsides of each ring. So I've just used this gauge. I'm just gonna lay it against the block. I'm gonna set my parting tool on the line and I'll, and I'll line it. And then I, now I know what angle I need to go in and I'm just gonna cut these uh, one at a time start them. I'm only going to start them right now. And I am going to use a delay than reverse because it's easier to work at this angle than it is the other way. I'd have to be reaching way out, way out here and that's not very comfortable. So we're going to do it this way. I'm not cutting that all the way through, I'm just gonna mark it so that I know what orientation I need to be on, what my line is when I do finally finish these cuts out. Alright, so we got those all started now. I'm going to turn a mortise in the bottom and uh, finish it up. And I'm actually going to finish sand the bottom of this ring so that the bottom of the bowl will be done before I put it on the lathe. Alright, I'm just going to take my tool that I made which has the same angle as my dovetails on it. All 
All right, so I got my mortise turned. I'm gonna sand this up and finish it. I'm gonna sand this ring only. I'm not gonna get into this ring because if I change this ring at all in terms of angle, it's not gonna sit on top of this one properly when I go to glue them back up. So I'm gonna sand out the mortise. I'm gonna sand the very bottom and, uh, and then I'll go back and I'll start cutting these rings out from the inside out. Okay, so I've got the bottom all turned out now. It's all sanded, finished up with Yorkshire grit. And I'm um, just gonna put a little bit of um, Hampshire Sheen High Gloss on this. And then I'm gonna part out these rings. The only thing I'm curious about, I'm gonna go very low RPM. The only, the only concern that I have is that when I get through the ring, is it gonna bind my parting tool? So I'm gonna be really careful. Go nice and slow and take a nice light cut with that. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I actually think I should cut quite a bit out of most of them before I finish out one. Okay, that is how I hope that would work. Excellent. So this cannot get away. All right, there's all the rings. I can get another ring off the outside edge, but I think I will do that on the lathe after the fact, because it's not gonna leave me a lot of, I don't think it's gonna give me the right angle here anyhow. Actually, I'm not gonna get another ring. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna work out. So after the graceful dismount here, um, I noticed that there was a little bit of tear out where the uh, parting tool went through the top and it looked a lot worse uh, than it actually was. Uh, that's why I'm doing a voiceover because I thought it was really bad at first, but it only took a couple passes on the drum sander to fix. All right, so thankfully the tear out was not nearly as bad as what it looked. <clears throat> it was really just the piece that was in the center splintered back around. So there's very little there's, there's no tear out actually. A couple passes to the uh, the double drum sander. Everything's good again. So I am going to uh, to glue these up now. I'm just going to set them and orient them by the by the, the laminations uh, to to align these up so they have nice straight rows in the blank. And um, I'll just clamp them to the top. And everyone has seen people glue things before, so I'm not going to bother you with that. Or if I do, it'll be at very high speed. All right, so I got this in a homemade bolt press. Um, my dad and my uncle actually made for me. It's got a crank on the top here. It's a seven eighths threaded rod down through. There's normally a bearing that sits right below that brass nut, which would have a face on it that would sit on top of this piece of wood or a piece of plywood, whatever, and it would uh, hold the wood still and put pressure down without putting any torque on the piece. Uh, but we broke that doing uh, something with it that we shouldn't have, and so this will have to work for now. All right, so I've got this out of the press back on the lathe. Um, the bottom four rings, uh, the base and the bottom four rings are lined up really well. The top ring, I think I got off just a tiny bit, and it's not bad, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's not bad at all, actually. But my concern is that these rings, considering that I started out with 
you know, three quarters of an inch between the lines are much thinner than that. Um, they're only half an inch maybe thick. So next time I do one of these, I'm going to widen those rings out a little bit. And um, it's, it's very thin right here. So I've, I've got about three eighths of an inch rough right here at this transition. So hopefully I can get this turned down. It's going to be a thin walled bowl. Uh, I think I'm going to flare the top out a little bit, which I think I can do. Uh, I think I can do. We'll find out. But first things first, I'm going to get this transition between this first joint done. Once I get past that and uh, that's okay, I think the rest of it's pretty good. That's just a straight in cut. I've got five eighths of an inch left in the bottom of this thing pretty well. Uh, so I can, I can make this transition cut uh, decently. It's going to be a, a steeper angle on the bottom though, and, or normally would turn it, but uh, that's, that's just this design of bowl. And it looks like I'm a little bit void of glue right here, but I'm hopeful that that's just a very it's squeezed out on both sides. So I'm hoping that there's lots in there. Anyhow, if there's not, I will uh, put some thick CA in to compensate for that. It looks like the lines matched up pretty good. And again, there's no, you won't know for sure until it's uh, completely turned. All right, so apparently that didn't record. So it's made my first pass down here. Um, joints look pretty good. Uh, just a little bit more to take off here. Uh, I am just going to go down the outside and see how this joint's going to work out so I can see what I've got. This is the only joint that I'm concerned about, this one right here. So we'll see what I've got for uh, for thickness after I clean up the back side of this. We'll go from there. I'll move you up top so you can watch that one. bowl gouge on this is just kind of vibrating a little bit so what I did is I put a little bit of oil on this to try and soften this up just a little bit and I'm just going to try and work it with the grain coming inside to outside with a scraper and see how that works so I'm going to sharpen up a scraper and we'll see what happens there I know people get a little freaked out when you start doing insides of bowls of scrapers but in this case I'm going to go very light it's a very thick scraper hopefully I can take some of this out Now I'm going to go back outside and work this outside down. See what I've got for the outside diameter and then we'll come back to the inside again. Okay, I like that shape <clears throat> and I think I'm good to sand up the outside. So I'm going to get that sanded up off camera. Alright, so <clears throat> I've got this sanded up now to 240. Paducah is really porous and the sanding dust that comes off it is really fine and it gets everywhere and you saw when I did the bottom how it bled into the yellow heart. So what I've done, rather than wipe this down with denatured alcohol and make it wet and just leave it in the pores. I've taken my air hose and I've blown all the pores out and I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up or not, but you can see that the, you can see this or not, but the pores are, are pretty open here now. So, um, got a kind of an alignment issue here. These were lined up really nicely, but now that it's finished turned, they're, they're just staggered just a tiny bit. So, um, something to work on for the next one. Anyhow, I'm gonna use some Yorkshire grit on this and uh, regular microfine, then we'll go back in the inside. And, uh, and we'll finish up the inside. All right, we'll put some finish on here now. I'm gonna use some Hampshire Sheen High Gloss. There we go. Just gonna give that a minute or two to harden and then I'll we'll start hollowing out the inside again.
All right, there we go. So I'm gonna sand this the same as the other one and I will bring you back when I'm putting some finish on the inside here. Okay, we're all sanded up here. I've got the dust blown out of it. So I am gonna put some sanding sealer on the inside now that I remembered. <coughs> one way or the other here. This is my land sanding sealer. Actually help clean it up quite a bit and seal it. So I'm just going to give that a minute and I'm going to put another coat on it. Okay, it's all dry now so we can get back on with the, give her some regular Yorkshire grip and then we'll do the microfine. So imagine this video is going quite long. So while I'm putting this on, just a couple of things actually before I, I'll, I'll do a lot of this off camera, but um, so this was an experiment in what I hoped would be a, an easier way and maybe a more accurate way to make these rings for a bowl out of a board. And I'm, I'm actually happy with how the jig works. Um, what I will do next time though is I will make my rings wider uh, because I did I did wind up with much narrower rings than I thought, and that made a, a quite a bit more difficult turn than what it would have been had them rings been an extra, you know, even an eighth of an inch wider. So uh, I'll do that differently next time. <clears throat> I think what I will also do is put a backer, even though this was up against the plywood, I think I'll put a backing piece behind the board next time on the faceplate so that when my, so that when my um, parting tool cuts through that I don't get any tear out. Now it looked, when I took those off, it looked really, really bad, but again, um, it, it wasn't bad at all. You can see these rings are still almost seven eighths of an inch thick. I only had to make two or three passes on the sander to get them cleaned up again, but that's another step. And when you do that with those rings, you risk having one of those glue joints break again. So, so a couple things I do differently. Another thing too is I use a really thin kerf. I just got it. It's a Carter & Sons 16th inch parting tool. Got it from Branches and Bowls in Calgary, or Branches 2 Bowls in Calgary. And uh, really happy with it. Um, I'd be leery about doing that with a very thick kerf um, parting tool. The way that one is designed with the hook at the bottom, it didn't leave much in there to get wedged. And so I would caution people who try to do this. And again, everything you do is at your own risk and I don't like to cop out like that, but um, you, could, you could wedge that in there and wind up launching a piece of wood or breaking your chisel or whatever. So I would caution you on that part of it. Give her some Yorkshire grit microfine. Same exact process. Just a much finer finish. Okay, so I'm going to do this off camera and I will bring you back when I'm putting on the Hampshire sheen at the very end. Okay, now we're going to hit some Hampshire sheen high gloss. Please with that. All right, I'm going to give it just a few minutes here for that wax to set up, and um, you know, I'll probably buff it one more time lightly, and then we'll take it off. I'll put some pictures up at the end. Thanks again to everyone who watches the channel and subscribes. I really appreciate it. Um, if you haven't subscribed and you like what you saw, please consider doing so. Put out a video every week and uh, try to mix it up a little bit and for my resin junkie friends there is resin videos coming um, haven't had time to uh, to do the process properly lately so uh, so i'm not going to do it wrong i i haven't had time to stabilize and and dry wood properly to cast but once i get some time here and I'm, i think that's going to happen soon enough so be some resin videos coming in the near future I hope that shows up as cool as looking spinning in, in on the video as it does live because it's pretty funky live I like it all right 
I'm pretty happy with that for our first go around. Again, there are some little tiny bits of misalignment, so uh, which is really odd because this one here is almost perfect, this one's perfect, and this one. But how these ones could be out a little bit and these ones still be perfect is beyond me. But anyhow, uh, that is something I'll work on for the next one. But I definitely will be doing another one of these, and I'll do it the same similar way because I like that. I like how that works. Uh, just gotta perfect it a little bit. So. I'm just wiping my finish here before it's done. So I'm going to put this back on and buff it again. And I'll have some pictures up at the end. Uh, if you're still watching, thanks so much for sticking with me. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time.